Today's decision by the United States Supreme Court will bring marriage equality to 11 more states. The Supreme Court declined to hear appeals to federal court decisions that overturned bans on same-sex marriage in five states, Utah, Oklahoma, Virginia, Indiana, and Wisconsin. That means marriage equality is coming to those states almost immediately. There are challenges to bans on marriage equality from six more states in front of those same appeals courts. Those bans will also be overturned. That will leave just 20 states with bans on same-sex marriage, meaning more than 60% of Americans will live in states where marriage equality is legal. Ted Cruz released this statement. The Supreme Court's decision to let rulings by lower court judges stand that redefine marriage is both tragic and indefensible. The Supreme Court is abdicating its duty to uphold the Constitution. This is judicial activism at its worst. I will be introducing a constitutional amendment to prevent the federal government or the courts from attacking or striking down state marriage laws. Oklahoma's conservative Republican governor, Mary Fallon, said, the will of the people has now been overridden by unelected federal justices accountable to no one. Rights have once again been trampled by an arrogant, out-of-control federal government. But Wisconsin's Republican governor, Scott Walker, simply surrendered. For us, it's over in Wisconsin. The federal courts have ruled that this decision by, the, by this court of appeals decision is the law of the land, and we will be upholding it. Louisiana's Republican Governor Bobby Jindal said this. I'm a believer in traditional marriage. I know that uh, polls show that people's views are changing on this, on this issue. Uh, I'm not a weather vane like President Obama or Hillary Clinton. Uh, I happen to believe that, that marriage is between a man and a woman. I continue to believe in, in traditional marriage, but the, the ball is certainly in the, courts, uh, in the court's court, if you want. In Virginia, where marriage licenses were, were granted today, uh, shortly after the court's action, you are joined in marriage as wife and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Joining me now is Pete Williams, NBC News justice correspondent. Stuart Milk, the nephew of Harvey Milk and president of the Harvey Milk Foundation, and Dustin Lance Black, Oscar winner and LGBT activist. Pete Williams, uh, take us through what, what happened in the court today and how predictable this was. It seems Justice Scalia predicted this uh, when the court did their original decision. <laughs> predicted the eventual effect of it. I'm not sure he predicted how this was going to happen. Uh, here's how it works. We get an orders list. This is it at the beginning of the new term with all the cases that have piled up over the summer. Buried in it are the uh, simple one lines in the list of cases the Supreme Court is not going to take. And on these two pages were the marriage cases from the five states. So that is all the Supreme Court said. No reasons, no explanations. That's the way it normal works, normally works. So, so, you know, what happened here, I think we have to do a little guessing on. It takes four votes to grant a case. So, for example, the four conservatives might have been expected to say, we need to look at these lower court rulings that struck down bans against uh, same-sex marriage in these states. But they would only do that likely if they thought they had a fifth vote to win, and that is Anthony Kennedy, and they may well have decided they don't have him. So what about the liberals? Why did they not want to take these cases up? And I think there we have to sort of uh, give our tip of the hat to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who practically told us, if we'd been listening hard enough, what the Supreme Court was going to do when she said, if there's not a split in the circuits, we probably won't get involved, or we shouldn't. And, of course, there isn't a split in the circuits. All the appeals court decisions that came to the Supreme Courts from those five states unanimously said that the bans had to be struck down. So they may well simply say, sit back, let more states uh, join the party, and then ultimately the Supreme Court either won't have to rule, or when it does, the liberals may well have thought, it'll be a much, uh, it'll be a much shorter road for us to get all the way there. Now, as for the effect, um, you've talked about it pretty clearly. Immediately, marriage will go ahead in those five states where the bans had been challenged. They've already started there. Marriage licenses have already been issued. 
In the other six states, in those other federal circuits, it's a little less of a clear picture. The law of those circuits now, those are the green states here. The law, for example, that's the 10th Circuit you're looking at there in the West. The Utah and Oklahoma decisions, uh, we know what that is. The 10th Circuit also applies to Wyoming, Colorado, and Kansas, and by the way, New Mexico, but that, they already have same-sex marriage. So that's the law of the circuit there now. Colorado has already started to issue same-sex marriage licenses. Wyoming and Kansas say they'll, they'll wait and see. They're going to continue to fight it. Um, similar sentiment in some of the other states in the Fourth Circuit there, clustered around Virginia. And Wisconsin and Indiana were the Seventh Circuit. The other state there is Illinois. They already had same-sex marriage. So I think, you know, what would the ultimate effect be if a lower court ruled the other way and said, yes, a state can ban same-sex marriage? The Supreme Court might well then decide to get involved, but what would it do? Would it really be in a position where it says, today we're going to let marriages continue, go ahead, go ahead and get married, but then in a year or so say, eh, never mind, that it seems less likely now. Yeah, it, it certainly does seem that the opposition to marriage equality on, on the court is, is thin, and, and it makes me wonder, is there any speculation that it is possible that they didn't even have the four votes, uh, that, that they really didn't make it even to the threshold of four uh, to admit, uh, to, to, to consider these cases? Four votes to grant a case, yeah. as you say. We just don't know. Yeah. I mean, my guess would be that they probably did, but they but, just weren't sure that if they did grant the case, they would have Justice Kennedy for the all-important fifth vote to win the decision. But, you know, you're right. Maybe Chief Justice Roberts said now isn't the time. Who knows? Maybe they were unanimous in saying they didn't want to take the case. We just don't know. Yeah. Dustin Lance Black, uh, your home state of Utah now, uh, marriage equality is legal. Uh, um, I, I can't imagine what that must feel like for you. Well, I, I have a lot of family in Utah. I have a lot of family in Virginia, and most of my family in Texas. So it's a it's a day of celebration, I'll tell you that. And uh, a lot of phone calls back to Utah, a lot of phone calls back to Virginia, and congratulations. But what about Texas? Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who were left out of this today, and they're wondering how much longer they have to wait. Uh, so I'm, I am celebrating today, and it feels wonderful. I, I love that we have equality in Utah, and equality uh, is creeping into the South. But uh, there's a side of me that really, really wishes that the Supreme Court had taken this up to make a sweeping decision to once and for all say that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution applies to gay and lesbian people. Because let's be real, Lawrence, at the end of the day, you can get married in Virginia. But if you put your wedding photo up at work, you can still legally be fired. So the, the protection of that Constitution, that, that piece that could have come with a sweeping decision, we didn't, we didn't get the, even the chance at today. So there's a little disappointment. Uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. <laughs> we'll yeah. celebrate tonight and get back to work tomorrow. Well, let's, let's listen to what Ruth Bader Ginsburg has said she thinks is going to happen tomorrow. She does believe that the court will eventually have to take this up directly. Sooner or later, yes, the question will come to the court. But the remarkable thing is how attitudes in this country have changed on that mm. issue. And I attribute it to gay people ready to stand up and say who they are. When they did that, people looked around, and it was their next-door neighbor of whom they were very fond. It was their child's best friend, even their child. So people began to understand. Stuart Milk, when I see a Supreme Court justice say that and say people look a looked around and people began to understand, I got to believe that she's including in those people possibly some Supreme Court justices. <laughs> well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go there, but, uh, you know, certainly history has shown us that that can be true. But, you know, the, 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 the piece that where she said that, you know, we're going to have to take this up, and this actually piggybacks on what Lance said, is that we do want the Supreme Court to take this up, because what we do want them to do is to include sexual orientation under heightened scrutiny, a classification that would be similar to race and sex, and this would then strike 
break down all of the laws that discriminate on LGBT people. But this is definitely a day of celebration, Lawrence. I've got uh, pictures coming in of same-sex couples getting married in the South. I was just in South Carolina yesterday. I was with Equality South Carolina. These are folks who didn't have much hope, and now they they are going to have marriage equality. And I got an email from Roopville, Roopville, Georgia, a little town where a very young gay couple said, we now feel that we have hope because South Carolina has it. And, you know, my uncle gave me this little book the U.S. Constitution. And, you know, he told me that this prevents the majority from discriminating against the minority. And this Constitution is being upheld. Um, now, it's never fast enough. Uh, justice and equality never moves quick enough. But I have tremendous respect that uh, not only is the country moving ahead, but that this court is going to take up this question. But today is definitely a day of celebration. Uh, Pete Williams, as you look at the legal horizon, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg saying at some point they're going to have to take it up, when do you think that would be and, and in what form? Well, there's uh, two circuits that could well lead, co uh, have contrary decisions. It could say that a state can constitutionally ban same sex marriage. Uh, it's the Fifth Circuit, the Texas case, isn't very far along yet, but, you know, that could well be one of them. The other case everyone's watching is the Sixth Circuit, Ohio and Michigan cases. That could come out any day now. Uh, it did look at the argument like there was one vote on each side with maybe the deciding vote being Jeffrey Sutton. Now, remember, he's a Republican appointee, but he's also one of the judges who uh, voted to uphold Obamacare. So he is, uh, he is somewhat unpredictable. He's probably the least pleased person in America right now because it means he's going to have to go ahead and write that decision. If the Supreme Court had said it was going to take the case, it would have taken a lot of pressure off of him. Now that court has to deliver. How will it go? Who knows? But in terms of timing, I think if a court now does reach a contrary ruling and say, yes, a state can ban same-sex marriage, then I don't think it's going to come before the Supreme Court this term. We'd probably have to wait a year, and then who knows how many more states will have decided to uh, accept same-sex marriage in the intervening time. Uh, Dustin Lance Black, we might be a year or two away from that final moment where the Supreme Court does uh, rule, and, and it seems, judging by the momentum of where this is going legally, uh, rule uh, in a 50-state ruling uh, that legalizes marriage equality. Yeah. Uh, that, that looks like where we're headed, and I, I frankly have to say it's, it's life-saving uh, to think that young people, uh, young gay and lesbian people, when they fall in love, know that they're no longer second-class citizens because of that beautiful feeling in their heart. That is truly life-saving and empowering. But guess what? That day is coming. I think we all see it's inevitable now. There's work to make sure that it, it is a reality. But we have to get to work in this country, making sure that gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people are not discriminated against at work, can hold a job, and can keep their home. Uh, then, then we'll be getting closer to a place where I'm ready to celebrate. Dustin Lance Black, Stuart Milk, and Pete Williams, thank you all very much for joining me tonight.